No. No. <laughs> no. Okay, no. Did you yeah. lose it when you were in school? I did, I did. I actually lost it in school. Uh, I saw someone else using it and I was like, that's mine. Like, I know that's mine. <laughs> We have a bunch of um, of guests for today's um, episode. So, without any further ado, we'd like to introduce Franz Cruz and Tyrone de Guzman. So, Franz, can you hello. tell us something about yourself? Oh, hello. So, uh, yeah, I'm Franz. Uh, currently, graduating student from UP Diliman. So, about to be a corporate slave. <laughs> Thoughts? You? Um, I'm quite the opposite. So I'm a, I was a freshman, so starting second year in UP Diliman. Um, not yet about to be a corporate slave. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> okay, that's great. And if you guys heard it, they're students currently or just about to enter corporate enslavement i'm sorry because that <laughs> but our theme today is not corporate our theme is actually just pens and students because apparently these two of our former students are into fountain pens so might as well right take advantage of your student capital i'm sorry we're still going with the marxist <laughs> with the marxist metaphor but yeah all right so that's it yeah, so we have um, in this episode our former students. Interestingly, one was um, used, well, actually, was my student who wrote a research paper about fountain pens and was actually penabling me already when he was in grade 12. But I just didn't pay too much attention about fountain pens back then. So... And the other one, Thoughts, just recently, randomly messaged me. And he was talking about his <laughs> recent acquisitions in the last year. And he'll get to talk yeah. about that in a short bit. Because like I had no idea that Thoughts would suddenly become, you know, in this a, a part of this community. And, oh, God, the start of the rabbit hole, Thoughts. Oh, get ready. Unfortunately. <laughs> or fortunately. <laughs> Okay, to start off our episode, we have this segment called Noob Discovery, wherein we're going to share our most recent discovery about fountain pens, ink, stationery, or content creators, and even pen influencers in the community. So maybe we can invite who younger, older first. Let's go younger. by age, because that means I'm last. Thank you. <laughs> okay, youngest we'll go first. To the young, okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so recently I got a new pen, the, uh, uh, what do you call this? Narwhal Skull Kill, or if that's what you call it. So it's very, it's a very pretty pen. Um, it looks like, uh, one of the paintings of Van Gogh or something like that. But, so this is my first pen that the, the nib is actually like, it, it didn't come smooth from the box. So it was very dry and stuff. So right now it's a it's a it's an expensive paperweight on my desk. So that's one of my discoveries. Like um it's the first time I had a pen that was actually uh it didn't start properly. And yeah, so <laughs> that's one of my discoveries. And when I approached the seller, he was like, Oh, um, you should use a wetter ink or something, but that wasn't like uh, one of my problems with my other fountain pen. So, recent discovery, I guess there's a first for everything. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's perfectly fine thoughts. You know, um, I remember when I heard I had my first fountain pen, I also had one that was very dry. It was a moon man. Um, but mm. there's there, there are videos on YouTube. You just got to check it out where they, they try, to, try to flex it, force flex it a bit. Yeah, yeah, the neck that's true. I think the tines are, are tight, is that right? Yeah, yeah, they could be misaligned. I mean, we can't really see it with our naked eye, but if you actually zoom in really, really close, you might end up seeing that it's actually misaligned or 
Yeah. So yeah, that's right. There's a first for everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll try that soon. I I restarted to. I'm gonna resort to that very soon because it really annoys me. Like I want to use the pen, but I can't. So, <laughs> yeah. Good luck, thoughts. Oh, friends. What about you? Oh, okay. Yeah, on my end, uh, I was able to stumble upon this article. Uh, it's about the how India's artisanal fountain pens are making their mark. So, uh, I've never known that. Uh, India actually has a lot of uh, pen makers. I've always thought it's just Ranga, if you've heard of Ranga. Um, but yeah, actually, they there's a lot of uh, pen makers there, and they're getting traction from the foreign market also. Uh, I, I remember like reading one that uh, they have like a two year wait list already, and they're pretty affordable uh, compared to like from Japan and from th- those other Western pen makers. So yeah, I think some examples that I saw were Phosphor pens, ASA pens, Lotus pens, Guiden pen. So yeah, you don't really hear about them, but they've actually been making pens around since the 40s even. So it's, it's like a family thing. So yeah, that's pretty interesting for me. Uh, it's something uh, new for me and so something to discover. Yeah. I can send the link later okay. of the yeah. article. Yeah. Actually, your new discovery pretty much is also my new discovery Ooh. now. <laughs> because to be honest, my new discovery is... It's not really a new discovery, but it's more of like a discovery of a state of being when it comes to fountain pens. You know, the, that phase where you're just consistently acquiring, which maybe Thoughts is experiencing right now. You know, you just keep on buying, you keep on looking at pens. And then now, I'm in a state wherein I don't need this pen or it, I don't need it right now or maybe it's not working out for me right now. I've tried Japanese uh, pens with Japanese nibs and then have those with Western nibs, and maybe that's why it's a it's a new discovery related to Francis' point because maybe I will end up trying Indian <laughs> pens in the future. So there, so yeah, very boring new discovery for me, <laughs> but I think everyone experiences that from time to time. Um, it is we're recording this on July eighth, so seven seven sales have just taken place, and uh. I have. Someone giggled. Thoughts just giggled. <laughs> guilty. <laughs> I too am guilty. Because honestly, like I've just, I've just been really wanting to get I mean, what what do we call it in Tagalog? Pangtawid. Okay. To get us across the 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 gap of buying one thing to the next. Because like my spending habits are kind of they're actually moderate. I actually only buy things up to three times a month and they're small things so it's not really that bad but that has nothing to do with my noob discovery because my noob discovery is this okay you can't see it guys um but i'm holding it up to the camera right now this is in japanese but i'll do my best estimate of what it is it's pink ink okay from ishimaru bun ishimaru bun which is in um what are the two places in japan that got um Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Okay, Hiroshima. I think Ishimaru Bun is from Hiroshima. And this particular ink that I have in my hand is inspired by pickled ginger. Ooh, pickled ginger. Pickled cool. ginger. Like the side <laughs> that you get when you get your sushi plate, right? It's beside the wasabi mm. and the blue leaf. Ah, and it yeah. also smells like ginger. It smells ah. like ginger when you use it. So like, I just... I, my boyfriend actually got this, I think, last month. And then immediately when he got it, I took it. Um, of course. <laughs> so that's the perk. Um, and I, I only used it this month. So I'm so happy about it. it, it it's, it's, it's so extraordinary. Plus, I've never had a scented ink. This, the scent fades away almost immediately upon setting the ink down on the page. But the novelty is really there. You can open the bottle and... Smells like ginger. Smells like medicine. Beautiful. That's my new discovery. Beautiful. It's good to really have a partner who's also into fountain pens. At least you can trade. 
<laughs> stuff. <laughs> or rather steal stuff as or I you, tend to do. Uh, you can, what do they call it? Beg, steal, borrow, <laughs> whichever works. Okay. So that's it for our noob discoveries today. Don't worry, we will add links in our description for all of them. Um, and we're going to move on because we haven't talked to these gentlemen. I was going to say kids, but obviously they're yeah, not I, anymore. You were going to say kids. I know, my tendency is to say kids, but yeah. Um, we're now going to catch up with these gentlemen who will now try to get used to calling us by our first names throughout the episode. Good luck. Good luck. Okay, so we're going to start out. I think if you've listened to our previous episodes, one of our most basic questions is really, how do you get started on your pen journey? So, like, get to it, guys. How do you start? Anyone can take the floor. Okay, uh, I'll start. So, ever since I was younger, actually, it was something I've been having for a while now, probably, like, starting grade 9, grade 10. So, I... I don't know. I found I found fountain pen school, but I never really got one because my mom was like, "Oh, it's an expensive uh, novelty or something like that." So I was like, um, "Yeah, I found it cool," and I really I decided to get one. I think uh, grade eleven or some sort like that, but I never really used it. Uh, I, I wasn't using it a lot because um i for me i didn't have like i was so excited to get a fountain pen and when i got one i was like what's this i like i didn't know how to write with a fountain pen i, I was like what <laughs> and then, but then um over like uh at the end of senior high school so i decided i i panicked uh i impulse bought a hongkian so the the my first fountain pen was uh what do you call this uh this the diamond five eighty and then after that I, I got a Hongtian six zero one three yeah it, it was an impulse decision like I was like oh this pen looks nice and then like uh one day after I had the pen in my hand so I think that's when I really appreciated fountain pens because at the start um. For me, the as a student, the Diamond Five Eighty was like not the cheapest thing, especially for a pen. So, I I wasn't like I don't think I was using it as it should have been, and I think I only got to actually use it when I got the Hong Tian because I was like ah the Nimbus One Hundred Peso, so I I could have used it all I want. So yeah, and I think that was when I really got in fountain pens and. Yeah, it has been an interesting you know, journey so far. <laughs> How about you, friends? Oh, yeah, my journey. Uh, so <laughs> ever since before, ever since we were allowed to use ballpoint pens in school, mm. uh, I've already been into pens, but I was into ballpoint pens. Uh, every year, I would go to the distributor of pilot pens here in the Philippines, in Binondo, Cosmos Bazaar. Uh, that's every year, um, but around the 2014, if I remember right, uh, I accidentally, quote unquote, bought a fountain pen because the sales lady said three. I I thought the the sales lady said three hundred pesos, but it's apparently one thousand three hundred. <laughs> but she already opened it, so uh, I didn't <laughs> buy that much that day. Uh, but yeah, so when I saw the bill, I was like, oh, okay, so there's an extra. I'll, I'll just, I'll take it na lang. I didn't use it for a few months because I was like, what the hell is this? Like, I don't know how to use it. Uh, I, I didn't even have ink yet that time, no cartridge. So yeah, and then I started researching about it um, around 2015. And then I, I was pretty much uh, like, it, it was just... It's already the, the, the start of the rabbit hole. Uh, that was a Pilot Prera. That was the one I bought. Uh, I don't have it anymore because I was like buying other pens. But that was the start of my journey. Uh, around 2015, I think that would be my acquisition phase, 2015. I think I was around second year high school. Uh, yeah, I was pretty much the only one uh, in the batch doing that. Pretty weird, but 
uh, that was how I took down notes before, ever since, yeah, in high school. Um, yeah, y- y- at the time, Fountain Pen Network was still a forum. It was still a website. No Facebook group yet. So uh, we would discuss there and then the wala pang palengke. Uh, it's still in the forum also. So it was pretty much ancient ancient technology <laughs> at that time. Yeah, and yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm like a senior, like old member, but not, not yeah, still young. It's very <laughs> amusing, Franz, because technically, you're the most veteran, okay, pen collector in this Zoom room right now. You've been collecting since 2014. You, are you, do you feel like you're past your acquisition phase? I actually am past my acquisition phase. Uh, I my last pen purchase was in 2019, uh, but uh, I'm I'm sure it's gonna circle back. Uh, when I start earning my own money, I'm sure I'm gonna be able to buy. Uh, I my purchases w- would be more. Uh, I think it would have more of a theme also. So let's see. Um, I'm excited to go back to the hobby, actually. It's just that right now I'm focusing on, on other hobbies. Pandemic hobbies. Yeah. Okay, wow. Um, the entire spectrum, the spectrum, the both ends of the spectrum are now exposed. We've got Thoughts, who's at the start. Thoughts, there will be further acquisitions very soon. <laughs> Fix your times. And France is just about to circle back, so... I don't know where we are, Ryan. How do you feel about this? Oh, for us, I think we're in the middle. <laughs> when it comes to this full pen journey, I think we're we're just in the middle. Um, but then again, I do think that the pen, the whole pen journey is not it's not like a it's not like a hero's it's actually like a hero's journey when you think about the pen acquisition you know you're gonna go to the end and you're gonna realize oh no there's another calling and then you're gonna win and there's some form of redemption and then then there's a new pen so yeah it's really a a, a cycle it's like a circle that goes round and round and round but it's a fun it's a fun hobby and um for thoughts who's just starting out and for friends who Hopefully soon, once he's already a corporate slave, <laughs> we'll start shelling out to get money to buy <laughs> to buy fountain pens. So, friends, I think maybe you're 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 not buying any pens yet because you're reserving for a big purchase once you're already working. <laughs> Is that uh, right? Maybe true. Uh... Yeah, I, I think we're going to discuss the Grail pens later, right? So, um, that I have a few in mind. Uh, it's just that I, it, um, at my stage in life, wow, uh, so old now. But, uh, at my stage in life, uh, while I'm starting my job, uh, I really have to really think about my purchases, uh, especially um, since I already have like a, a like. Uh, uh, an enough amount of pens so yeah I, I think it's gonna really depend on um, if I see a good deal then I'll snatch it if, if not then it can wait so what's your everyday pen friends and thoughts okay yeah I'll, I'll, I'll go okay. so um, I have uh, so this is my pen case it's what is this uh, python leather I think yeah, Python leather from, from Indonesia. Uh, so usually I would carry three fountain pens and one ballpoint pen and then one Pahiram pen, mm-hmm. right? Uh, the Pahiram pen is very important because <laughs> someone will always ask you for a pen and I cannot let them like borrow my, my other pens. So it's pretty convenient. So this pen case has five slots. So my ballpoint and three three pens. Uh, yeah, um, actually this ballpoint pen I've had for seven years. It's my everyday ballpoint pen. Yeah. So yeah, in this pen case, I currently have um, Morita Store uh, Sailor Pro Gear. And then I have a Parker Duofold Centennial. 
um, this is from the 80s, and then uh, Vanishing Point, of course. Uh, this is the gun metal with the black matte trim. Yeah. So, yeah, I usually categorize my pens, my, my three fountain pens, into one chunky pen, uh, one practical pen, and then one uh, whatever just floats my boat. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, I can discuss later the, 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 my other pens, but right now these are my, my pens. Yeah, I just, I do, I just use it here at home. So, so what's, your, what's your Pahiram pen? I'm curious, fans. Ah, my Pahiram pen would usually be another ballpoint pen. It's, it's still nice. From from the years that I was collecting ballpoint pens, right before fountain pens, so so I think they should be happy if they borrow my my pens. But I make sure <laughs> that they return the pen because I've lent them my seven year old pen and I've lost this twice, but it always comes back. So I think this is my my lucky charm. Wow! Yeah. Did you yeah. lose it when you were in school? I did. I did. I actually lost it in school. Uh, I saw someone else using it and I was like, that's mine. Like, I know that's mine. Yeah. Because I'm the only one, like, I know I'm the only one who has that pen. I usually put a mark inside the ink, the, yeah, the refillable ink so that, like, I know it's mine. Yeah. These are pro tips, friends. Thanks for telling us because I have lost a pen fairly recently and I should have had the Pahiram pen that I was willing to lose. So, thank you. Pahiram, by the way, um, audience, in Tagalog, I mean, is a Tagalog term, but when you translate it into English, means borrow. Borrow. So, it's a pen that's set to be borrowed. But Yeah. Mm, yeah. I, I think I was traumatized, and that's why now I have a, a, a Pahiram pen, just because I lent mm-hmm. my fountain pens before, and then, like, like, when I watch people use my pens, it's like <laughs> super pressure. And I was like, oh, no, like, no. So, yeah, I... Uh, immediately thought, thought about bringing a Pahiram pen. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, Francis, I borrowed your pen before. Parang never naman, no? No, yeah, no, no, you did not. You never borrowed your pen. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you weren't remember. interested yet that time. Yeah, I wasn't interested yet. I was more interested with how you wrote your research paper about <laughs> <laughs> How about for you, thoughts? What's your... What are your everyday carry pens? Okay, so right now I'm using, I only have, okay, so I'll tell you the story of my fourth fountain pen. So I only have four fountain pens. I have, initially, I was going to stop at three. I was like, okay, this is getting out of hand. This is getting out of hand. I'm going to stop. We're not buying any more pens, okay? Okay, but... uh. So the ones I use every day is the Hong Tian, uh, this one, 60, um, I think 13. Yeah, it's the beater pen. I would bring it everywhere because it's not really like as expensive as the other pens. And I use the Twisby Diamond 580. It's a very nice pen. So, um, and my favorite ink. So at that point, when I was having my fountain pen phase, even if I didn't have the fountain pen yet itself, like before I was like, ah, what's this? I was already like obsessing over like inks and colors and papers. There's so many things to factor. And I don't know, I, I really liked it um, because of that fact that there's so many things to factor. So my favorite color currently is the noodlers i don't know how you uh pronounce it Skretegi. uh it's a dark green it's a very black green and the uh, uh diamine eclipse so i usually like inks that are it looks professional but it's like you know it still has like you can it's still fun in a sense you know it's quirky or so, if you if you may anyways so um, I recently got the, what do you call it, the Snarwal Skull Kill. So it's, when I saw it on Shopee, it was like the last stock. And I was like, oh, it's a nice pen. I, I, I want, yeah. So so I ordered it. But when I, when I filled it up, it was like, why is it not writing properly? <laughs> why is it, why is it not writing? Yeah. So. I haven't had it fixed yet, so um, I'm going to try like the 
the you know the tutorials on youtube like the the pen habit so like the fixing the tines and stuff so i haven't tried that yet so you know there's a first for everything and okay so the story of my new fountain pen so i actually i actually forgot about the 77 sale so thank god right i actually forgot about it <laughs> but um so i was in my uncle's house the other day and i was talking about oh like oh you know i have this new hobby uh i'm writing with fountain pens yeah whatever and then like that was like the first sign that told me like oh you should talk about pens because i i was like debating like whether i should tell my uncle like i'm into pens or, <laughs> or, or something like that and then i was like okay i'll just tell him so i was like showing him my fountain pens and he was like oh um I have a fountain pen. You can have it. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay, <laughs> nice. Okay, that's my, that's my fourth fountain pen. But okay, so he got it like free from Seiko or something. So it's a, a platinum placer, I think. Yeah, yeah. So yes, new pen, new pen, and I didn't have to spend for it. So I thought I said I would stop at five, but uh, at three, at three, not five, but uh uh i guess you know it wasn't meant to be stopped at three so yeah <laughs> yeah your freudian slip thoughts meant that you'll have five very soon like i can yeah. already foresee <laughs> very soon yeah and your place soon is, enough soon enough your place here is one of the more recent releases it's like ombre midnight bluish i think so like i'll look for the link mm so that we can post it and just to you know make thing make um thoughts as anecdote a little more vivid he actually talked to me when he got his narwhal um that is how i found out yeah. that he had been in this rabbit hole for quite a while and he was like sure sure okay so i ended up getting <laughs> narwhal and it's pretty but the nib it is not flowing well and then i go full full mom I go full mom mode and it's like, if you can see it right now, it's just a continuous stream of links and mm -hmm. like pictures of how to fix the tines. And it's like, <laughs> I'm enumerating things that you can do. Option one, change the ink to anything pilot. <laughs> Option two, check for tine alignment. There is a way to do it. A, B, C, and D. The links to the pen habit, links to SBE Brown, so on and so forth. And then I'm just like, I care, child. Please do it soon. Wow, that's like a mojo for fountain pens. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take the teacher out. Did you just give him, just give him an asynchronous task? <laughs> yes. And he hasn't done it yet, out of fear. I haven't accomplished yet. I haven't accomplished it. I haven't accomplished it yet. But you know thoughts that 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 specific pen the place here place place here uh sorry my pronunciation may be wrong that's actually a nice one uh what nib what what nib is it i have not checked actually let's open okay, it that's <laughs> let's fine. open whichever nib it is whichever nib size it is it's actually a very smooth pen so I remember I was at I was at a point where I wanted to stop fountain pens and I got one place here accidentally. Then it was so nice. I was like, oh my <laughs> goodness, this nib is so nice. So because I got it at a time when I also got a moon man and I got disappointed with the moon man. So I said maybe mm -hmm. I should just stop here. And then <laughs> I accidentally bought a place here because I remember they had it on sale inscribed before then they delivered it to my house on the same day that i ordered it on the website really really weird but it was such a nice it was such a nice um surprise so that pretty much started again this whole liking and interest in fountain pen so maybe that's gonna be the same thing for you which leads me to uh, maybe Another question, like, obviously, Tots has already said that he currently has four pens, one accidental pen. And by the way, guys, I'm loving how we're just using the term accident <laughs> many times in our pen acquisition cases. But accident, I guess, is our operational term. Um, How many pens do you have right now, Franz? I guess I'm just curious. Uh, actually, I, I haven't really counted. It's around 20 or 20. 20 plus, yeah. 
yeah at, at some point i had around 50 but you know uh i uh i wanted to get more expensive pens so i had to sell off the the ones that i did not really like anymore makes sense makes sense maybe i will get to that point sometime soon i don't know ryan how many how many pens do you have at this point after your curation i'm just curious don't ask me that question <laughs> <laughs> well okay um curation i i honestly have 20 20 21 21 pens um but i am still going to let go of some pens um not because i don't like them it's just that i don't get to use them that much anymore so parang sayang and i think i've realized that i don't really want to collect too many too many caveco pens i just need a couple of um edcs and i'm good to go that's true so to anyone who is in the philippines fountain pen palenque Ryan's been posting a few. Like, you can get divs. I'm just, like, pimping those pens out <laughs> so that they sell immediately as well. Yeah, guys. I sell my pens at a low price. I always consider... I always consider how much I, I bought it and also how much people may be willing to buy it, considering also the state of the pen. So, yeah. So, I'm. I think I'm one of the the low uh usually one of the people who sell pens who sell it at, at the low price the lower price because i want of course people to get excited that they're getting a a, a deal a good deal so yeah that's true Very and happy. ryan always has the box apparently the yeah, box has an impact on the price so remember yeah that. i think so. Actually, I did notice that some people, I think there, there's a Pelican on sale in Palenque. No one wants to buy it because there's no box. <laughs> I know. And it's your exact M400, I think. It's the same one. And like without the box, that's, that's like, I don't know, one-fifth, one-sixth of the price already for some reason. So we don't understand it. We're still noobs in pen sales. We're more on the consumer end. And speaking of consumer consumering consumer life what's your grail guys what's your grail france is giggling what does this mean oh uh actually i think we have the same grail uh with yujika the pilot custom oroshi vermilion i really want that uh, i was able to try it in person uh with my with my friends from the from the network i uh, it is so so nice. Uh, it's it's chunky. It's it writes really well, and the color is something else. Uh, it's out of this world. Yeah, uh, I think I think the prime minister before used the like the black version of that, but the the red one really just just is something else. Yeah. Uh, so in the near future, hopefully, I can get one. It's quite expensive. <laughs> yeah uh besides that i will i actually also want at least one mont blanc great characters uh on my end i like the beatles one i also like the miles davis one but the beatles is really nice for me just because it's colorful so it's it's a it's a conversation starter uh Mm, maybe one more grail pen it would be the nakaya uh, any nakaya i just want to get one nakaya yeah i like that i like that list obviously because i'm biased towards the pilot custom community so good taste friends good taste <laughs> it's really but nice thoughts have you ever thought about what your grail would be i know i mean we know that you're like four pens mm. in but there's no harm in being ambitious so, so far, I don't think I really thought about it that much yet. I think if you ask me, like, what would be my grill pen right now, I would tell you the Hong Tian because it's the one that got me back into, like, use, actually using the fountain pen, right? So, but I haven't really, um, uh, like, thought of getting 
quite a more expensive uh, higher end pen mainly because <laughs> I don't think my yeah, my parents would approve also and I think I would be conscious to bring such you know to use an expensive pen but we'll see in the future like how the hobby develops and stuff but as of now I would say the Hong Tian just because you know it really got me to start the hobby again so yeah get you and your grail pen doesn't have to be expensive by the way it's just something mm. that's quite inaccessible to you which is currently my grail has shifted of course to the moon man q1 because every time one is posted i know <laughs> it disappears <laughs> every time one is posted it disappears as fast as that poke as fast as an abra is that is that the pokemon that like you go into the grass and then suddenly it's just there and then it leaves you after one move that's the moon man q1 to me right now <laughs> horrible what you want it you want it pala sana pala abangan ko eh i will i will watch out for the next post of the moon man i i remember when this uh, kim was selling it um i think she she was selling it at a lower at a low price compared to the other ones who were selling it so i should have got one for you already i should have reserved it already for you Fine. I'm also thinking of just biting the bullet and actually risking by because I've never bought from AliExpress, so I might actually go ahead and go there instead because it's really way cheaper when it comes straight from the source. So, wish me luck, guys, or wish my budgeting skills, financial mm-hmm. predictions, you know, being a mindful adult. Okay, wish me success on that. Next question. What's our? Ne- yeah. Oh my god. So yeah, our next our next question is, um, what's the most challenging thing about being a young or new person in the hobby? Like probably for for France, that would be yeah. Actually, it's both ways. But I think for France, it's going to be you're young, but you're pretty old in the hobby. And then we have thoughts here who's young and he's also new to the hobby. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's face it. I think money is the is the <laughs> The, the problem like if you're young uh it would be limited money uh there's a lot of pens out there really nice pens and they're all just out of budget uh the same can be said for inks and paper because the paper isn't uh, isn't cheap you have to get the right paper for your pens to uh so you can really enjoy your pens uh for for inks Also pretty expensive. Actually, fun fact: I've never finished a bottle of ink, so I still all the inks I have, uh, still there. Haven't finished any, but yeah, inks are pretty expensive too. If you calculate all the costs that you have with the student budget, uh, yeah, you're gonna have to sacrifice a bit with I don't know with your food, uh, with your other expenses. Yeah. Um. I guess also as a new person in the hobby, if ever, I think it would be. Uh, there's a lot of content out there, and you really need to know like who who's to who to trust. Yeah, because there are a lot of people who are just reliant on Facebook posts and YouTube, but it really helps to to have a connection with any member in the in the in the community, and you can discuss. It's healthy and. Uh, it, it's nice to meet new people also that share the same passion as you with with pens. So, as someone who's young in both like the hobby and uh, as a person, <laughs> I think um one of my well, I don't think I've really experienced uh like any difficulties yet. Um, but probably maybe it's. Um, where I use my pen, and so it's not like I can go out anyways. But I haven't really used my pen in outside situations yet. So I've only used it like, um, you know, in my house when I'm taking notes or when I just simply want to like relax and use the pen. So I think that's maybe like I want to get to use it more in outside situations other than. Just like you know the the fabricated uh, situation that is my my room. So yeah, room as fabricated situation. That's totally good. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense though. Like I mean, our rooms are fabricated offices, 
classrooms. <laughs> it's all an illusion, but <laughs> at least our pens are safe. I guess that's the only thing that um that, that's the positive thing about staying at yeah. home is that our pens are safe. But there's that, you know, actually one of the things I I think I'm missing, or at least I want, is to have that experience of like bringing my pens out and then showing it to be like, oh, look at my pens. Look at my pens, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you don't care, like look at my hands. I think that that's one of the fun things about being back to normal. Like, just get to bring out your pants without worrying that you might end up destroying it because your hands were still soaked with alcohol, rubbing mm-hmm. alcohol. I mean, and then end up touching your pants. So I think that's gonna damage it. And speaking of communication or like being part of a community, it, it, and I'm trying to keep up with the youngins today or in this year, we learned about Discord. So apparently, uh, Fountain Pen Network Philippines also has a Discord channel. Okay, so I'll ask them if, uh, as far as I know, the link to that Discord to add yourself on it is on Fountain Pen Network Philippines, the Facebook group. But just in case, I could link you to that and they'll ask permission from the admins if we could link it in our description as well. Because, you know, the more the merrier. I'm still... Having dreams of, you know, having a meetup with some members there, even digitally or something like that. I don't know how that's going to work. But yeah, thank you, Plumang Pinoy Discord server. Because I, 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 I remember being there after one week. My Laban pen had started getting issues with the converter. Like the, 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 the knob got stuck. And then absolute strangers... We're just like, maybe you can do this, do that. And it was like a three-hour conversation. And this total stranger, one of the admins just said, you want to do a video call in one of the rooms? <laughs> he helped me fix things. I mean, it didn't work out, sadly. The converter is gone. Thank God for universal converters. But that was so supportive. I felt so affirmed that like there was this community so immediately present. Um, well, I like Discord, apparently, more than Facebook. So I have to like manage my time on Facebook. So maybe Discord is also accessible to everyone. So community thoughts, you can add yourself on there and maybe, <laughs> you know, buy a pen. Joke lang, joke lang. <laughs> that for my fifth pen that we were already foreshadowing a while ago. <laughs> I'd like to vouch that actually, the sense of community in the, the network. Uh, ever since before, uh, everyone has been really nice, actually supportive. If you have any questions, uh, they'd help you out. Uh, I can't say the same with the other hobbies but uh, that I have, but uh, I've always felt that the community in the Fountain Pen community here in the Philippines is pretty uh, close-knit because we're, we're not that big, right? But growing, but not that big. But... Yeah, everyone seems to be really nice, friendly. Uh, you can just reach out to anyone. That's true. And the community defies age. Like, it's amazing. Like, thoughts are you on the group? I know we obviously know that France is in the Facebook group, but thoughts you got to get on it. People yeah. of all ages, of all industries, of all professions. I mean, there's a monthly challenge even. There is this movement for those members who are having a difficult time during the pandemic. Like, we love Fountain Pen Network. We also love mm-hmm. Fountain Pen Tolinga. So, yeah. We'll link that if you want to be part of it. Filipino community. Why? Because our listeners are mostly not from the Philippines. So, maybe. Maybe if we link it, you know. Come on. Make the community grow. Okay, I am digressing. Sorry. We have more questions that need answers. Yes. Yeah, so now we're actually interested. Like, has the um has your fountain pens or have your fountain pens actually contributed um to your student life or what what exactly is the probably impact or maybe how do you feel about studying when you're using a fountain pen? How's the experience? Okay, so for for me, actually, like the fountain pen has got me back to using paper. So, you know, especially in this digital setup and everything, I was using a lot of, I just typed my essays or whatever. Paper, what's that, right? But I realized also, um, so actually, okay, wait, I, I kind of take that back. I use a lot of paper as an architecture student, but, but, uh, but, but, but as 
like when writing papers and stuff or taking notes, I didn't really consider um writing on paper again until I've used a found a fountain pen. So I think it has benefited me in a lot of ways actually because I I had this reading. I think it was a 20 page reading and I was I was I was reading it on my laptop and I realized like I decided to print it so I could use my fountain pen. <laughs> so I was like bored I didn't want to read it. So so I could use my fountain pen to take notes or whatever or like you know, yeah. So I realized that I actually took around like half the time on paper. So I was like where was this all my life? Like I spent so much time ways like studying and doing all these things digitally where I could cut the time if I just printed the the material so yeah that's how it has helped me so far in in my student life so very very amazing discovery <laughs> but also yeah maybe thoughts as your teacher you knew I was using fountain pens when I was teaching you you could have just asked <laughs> okay, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's why I came to you actually like when when my pen wasn't working. I was like, ah, I know I know Jika. <laughs> I know Jika knows about this. So yeah. I used to lend out my vanishing point for the class secretary to take attendance. Mm. Yeah, okay. Francis' eyes just widened when I said I used to lend it to my student, <laughs> the VP. Exactly. Because like I was already at that point where it's like, oh, the more, the merrier. Penable. And thoughts is there now. I am so happy that you are in the phone. <laughs> yeah. Mm. What about you, Franz? Oh, on my end, uh, I think it's also just going back to simplicity, if you can, if you want to put it that way. Uh, just because everything right now is digital, we're just we're in front of a screen the entire day, and just turning that off, disconnecting, and then writing with your pen, it's something else for me. Uh, it it's therapeutic in a way, also. Um, yeah, but to go back to my student, like d- during my 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 student life, um, my fountain pens used to be the way I wrote notes. So my first to so second year, I would write that. It would help me, especially if we had to, to write down the subscripts and those symbols, because it's really hard to type that down on, in the computer, the laptop. So I, I would be faster compared to my, to my, to my classmates when, when it comes to writing the formulas, because they would try to do it in the laptop. But yeah, uh, th- that was really helpful for me. Uh, besides that, I would usually also write down uh, my notes on uh, on index cards when it's exam time. Uh, yeah, it's just nice, nice to see like different colors uh, in, in the index cards. And it would give me more of a mental picture when I answer the test. I'm like, okay, I wrote, I remember writing this in green. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, this is the answer. So yeah, it, it helps me rather than typing it all down just because it's too bland online. Uh, there are different ways right now, for sure, like with Notion, you can decorate it, but uh, I'm not I'm not for that. I'm. It's easier for me to write down uh, a piece of paper. Yeah. That's really wild because, like, I don't know, there's likely some psychological thing with colors and association and, like, some theory of learning. Differentiated learning, but all right. Like, what? Multimodal? What's our key term? Yeah, I don't really want to go into education right now. I mean, the details of that. But I do think that there, there is research regarding um, retention of information when it's written or at least, yeah, when you write down the notes compared to actually typing the notes. So there's a difference in terms of retention. I think it really has something to do more of your muscle memory or like your reflexes. And basically your body also is in the whole process of you know absorbing the information. But yeah, anyways, geeky education and psychology stuff. So nice. let's move on to the next part. So probably our, our last question for you guys would be, why do you think 
other young ones or young people should join the hobby. I mean, probably for some people who are getting into the hobby, most of them are a bit older already, probably working already. Or another profile that I did notice, which is an interesting contrast with the kind of market I usually find in Palenque, is that I usually those who usually buy my pens are girls. But yeah, most of them are girls. And I remember my most recent buyer was, I think she just graduated from high school. So she's pretty much your age or probably starting college and she's a girl. Um, so what, what, what are your thoughts about people starting the hobby um, as early as probably in their 20s or early, early, early 20s or maybe even 19 and 18? Okay, so for me, I think um, I think one of the good things about fountain pens is that there is so some I I think it's so um where was I oh yeah so I think one so some people may think it's like backward like why are you using a fountain pen we have ballpoint pens we have laptops to type your notes you don't need paper anymore right so i think um one great advantage to uh these things is that you really get to slow down and just appreciate so actually most of the time i use my fountain pens is when i try to calm down i i'm actually like half half into a social media break right now but only half but only half but only half not 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 fully in it yet so when i'm feeling overwhelmed especially like actually two weeks ago i was having um i wasn't done with school yet i was having my final so i was like uh you know drawing and stuff like that and cramming and everything so one way of calming down is i allot 10 minutes with my pen and I sit down and I just write and I just write. I write my thoughts. Uh, I write what's happening around me. And I find that it really calms me down. It slows down because sometimes it slows down everything because sometimes so many things are happening at such a fast rate. You tend to forget what's really important and uh, you forget to enjoy the present. So I think, um, yeah, it's one way. I think you can have other hobbies to, you know, enjoy the present, but I think it's one way and it's an interesting way to uh, to do that. So, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to, to second just what Todd said. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, it's really very important to, to slow down after a really fast uh, day. Uh, I guess it also helps your mental state of mind that okay we're 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 human we're not like we're not uh robots like just face in, uh, in front of a screen the entire day yeah uh but besides that uh i i would also recommend uh young people to join the hobby e- even if they just get one pen one pen is enough like uh as hard as harsh it is to say mm-hmm. it's it's enough but uh, yeah, there's a sense of responsibility and caring if you have a pen that you spent for, uh, e- even if it's like a pilot kakuno or anything uh, affordable, there's still a sense of responsibility needed. Just uh, even with the, uh, the cleaning of the pen, that's very important, uh, filling it up with ink. Uh, yeah, so it's it's really just, you have a connection with your with your material things, which we usually take for granted. Also, just because okay, it's material, I can I can just throw it away. You know, that's the consumeristic mindset. But yeah, um, I think it also helped me as a person, uh, not to lose any of my pens, because yeah, I I end up like taking care of it. Talaga, yeah, I I can say the same thing for. For the other hobbies, I, I'm not, uh, like, if you talk to the car people, they'd be like, oh, I'd rather have a manual over an automatic. Just because uh, they feel more one with their car. Uh, just the same with watch people. Uh, they, there's something with a manual movement and an automatic mechanical movement uh, compared to a quartz movement. So yeah, it's, it's all about, like, the, the heart of it all yeah 
Super kilig. Okay. Uh, untranslatable Tagalog term, kilig, but it's like this mix of excitement and affirmation and warmth and fuzziness with everything that you guys said. Because one, you're our former student, so to hear this stuff coming from you is like, we did something right! I know! <laughs> You're so affirmed. But also, I never thought of it that way, Franz, especially the whole materialistic being one with the object kind of thing. But yeah, you're absolutely right. I, 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 I like the fact that, and the thoughts also said this, that you allot a certain period of time just to do that one thing is, is amazing because I don't do that or I didn't do that up until, you know, the pandemic happened and we ha- I had to return or I felt like I had to return to my hobby, which is the fountain pen. So, like, it's amazing. That's a really nice take uh, when it comes to to this whole process of acquisition. Actually, friends, you can come up with a, with a theory on this or, like, <laughs> a movement about object material, something. There's this thing called historical materialism that maybe you can have a perspective about materials. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's really interesting. Um, it's like, those are the things that I wanted to say or like I wanted to articulate, but you had the right words at the right moment. And that's really a nice way to actually even capture this whole hobby in a perspective, even interestingly, from someone who is still young, but has been in the hobby for quite some time already. And also someone who's new and is also young. And you guys really have, you know, started to find that kind of um, th- that passion for, for fountain pens, for this kind of hobby, which usually is associated with a hobby that older people <laughs> actually pursue. Thanks for sharing your experiences today. They're really unique. Huh? They're really unique experiences because often the pen noobs, <laughs> they come in in their 20s or a bit later. So your experiences for the listeners who just might be new ones, you know, who happen to stumble upon this podcast and all the other relevant podcasts will be very relevant to them. So thanks, guys, for coming over today. And I hope that at one point in time, there's a part two. Bring your other student pen friends, okay? And maybe we can have that episode recorded sometime in the future. So that's it. Is that it? Is that it, right? That's it for today's episode of Pen Noobs. Noobs. <laughs> Noobs. Yes. Thank you. thank you so much, Thoughts and thank Friends, you for, having for us. joining yeah. us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you.